Yes, sir. I'm not freaking blind, guys. It's Squalo style. I think it's Thursday. You could die? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Geez, you know. Oh, yeah, because it goes on and on and on. For all you haters, there's something to chew on for the next couple of Welcome back to the Guilao 60 channel. Listen to this. Chinese and Russian warships conduct highly provocative drills near Alaska's coast, sparking U.S. Navy to mobilize destroyers to lead rivals from American waters. Oh, yeah. It is believed to be the largest such flotilla to have approached American waters ever, ever in the history of the United States of America. U.S. Navy was praised for its robust response to provocative, provocative, that's a good word, provocative move and tensions. Warnings of further joint Chinese-Russian naval drills in dangerous world. Oh, isn't this exactly what the Americans have been doing in Taiwan and the South China Sea for years and years and years and calling it, what do they call it? Freedom of navigation. But when the Chinese and Russians do it, and they were in international waters. They were well past that international line 12 miles off the coast of Alaska, but yet it's provocative. It's, it's, it's a danger to the world. You got to ask your quest, yourself a question. Whose world is it dangerous to? Is it dangerous to the Chinese, the Russian, or the American world? Is it dangerous to their way of life because but you see, they've been doing it for years and years and years. So they, they know that, that it's, a, it's a bully tactic or could be construed as a bully tactic because they've been using it, that same tactic, for years. It's just it's never happened to them. So uh, the, old, the, old, the old saying, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Well, this is a perfect example of that and uh, it's about time that the Americans took some of their own medicine and uh, I'm glad this happened but you see they've been watching them for a while they, they they didn't quite know where they were going but the same flotilla <laughs> if that's what you want to call it flotilla I wonder who comes up with this shit uh, was down in the, the, the Sea of Japan just before they went up into this area by Russia. Because you got, you got Russia and you've got Alaska, and they're, they're I think, a couple hundred kilometers away. So if, if they want to do maneuvers by Russia, which happens to be by Alaska, you can spin it however you want. And I think that's what you see in here with the Americans. And they're, they're spinning it to try to rile their citizens, to try to um, gain some type of uh, propaganda coup on, on the Chinese and the Russians at this time. Because if it was the Americans and the Canadians, I know, it's Canadian ships going through the Strait of Taiwan, well, it wouldn't be a provocation. It would be, as I said, freedom of navigation. And that's basically what the Chinese and the Russians were doing. They were, they were doing drills. Oh, and now you've got the Chinese Navy, the largest Navy in the world, and the Russian Navy, by ship count, is the second largest Navy in the world. And you thought the Americans were? Tonnage-wise, yes, but not number number of ships. No, no, no. I think even the North Koreans. But I guess if you put uh, a 50 cal on a 18-foot loomerine and stick it out in the ocean, I guess you could call that a ship. Uh, but it is a ship, by golly, you know, it is. But So now you've got the Chinese and the Russians doing uh, maneuvers together, just like you've got the Japanese and the, the Americans doing maneuvers together in the South China Sea, just like you've got uh, Australians or Philippine and Americans doing maneuvers together in the South China Sea. But those are international waters, uh, according to the Americans. So it's OK, it's OK, it's OK. But the Strait of Taiwan, well, it's international waters, according to the Americans. So it's OK, it's OK, it's OK. But when they do it in international waters, 
off the coast of Alaska. Now, somehow that becomes a provocation and their destroyers have to be uh, scrambled, scrambled, I tell you, to go out there and, and shoo those pesky Chinese and Russians away from their coastline because that's, and, and they probably, they're probably getting their medals right now for doing that. When you, when you ask the Chinese about this whole thing, they say, well, the Americans are basically overreacting like they always do. Uh, they're like the drama queen, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, that's a spy balloon? It's a balloon. Oh, it's a spy balloon. It's it's taking our pictures. It's It, it got close to some of our, our military bases. It And at the end, it's just a balloon. You know, it, it's, no, it, it's no different, but it's... That spy balloon was a provocation, and uh, Russian and Chinese ships off the coast of Alaska are, are uh, provocation, and uh, freedom of navigation be damned if it's on our coast. It's only, it only works when it's on their coast, and that's the way they operate. So everybody knows there's been a dispute between uh, the Americans, the Taiwanese, the, the, the Chinese. Well, the Taiwanese are, are Chinese. They came from the mainland and landed there after the, the Civil War. So they are Chinese. You can call them Taiwanese. Uh, that's fine. Uh, you know, people from, uh, from Beijing or Beijingers, you know, Hong Kongers, Taiwanese, it's all in the name. But, and, and Taiwan is basically only, what, 80 miles, 79 point something miles off the coast of, uh, of mainland China. The first... 12 miles are Chinese water. Taiwan is part of China, so those 12 miles coming off Taiwan is Chinese water. So the if they want to go through there, I guess they've got to go in the middle. Is that the way it works? Like, you, you, t you tell me. There's a lot of, of uh, people that, that probably know this better than I do. But going through there, there's no other reason to go through that 80 mile strip rather than, you've got provocation. So what, the, what they're doing, what the Americans are doing with the, with the Chinese and the Russians off the coast of Alaska, using the word provocation, provocation, provoking uh, a dangerous world, it's, it's how dare them, is basically taking a page out of the playbook from the Americans and because they've been doing this for years in uh, in Taiwan and uh, calling it freedom of navigation and, and going through that 80 mile straight between mainland China and, and Taiwan for years and years and years, knowing that uh, they really don't have to do that. And there's really no other reason to do that other than provocation. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's so simple. So they've already gone down this road by doing it themselves. And now somebody else is doing it to them. So now the shoe is on the other foot. How is that for, for irony where the, the Chinese Navy is larger than the American Navy? Now with the Russian Navy, the second largest Navy in the, in the world, uh, sure, they've only got one aircraft carrier, but aircraft carriers with the missiles and stuff they've got nowadays are uh, a, just a bigger target is, is what they are. Uh, ships go down uh, and uh, that's the way it is. So are, are they starting to freak out? Are they, are they starting to uh, look at themselves and say, holy smokes, what have we created? What kind of world have we created? where we've been on the side of this being okay for years and years and years. And because we've said it's okay for years and years and years by doing it in the South China Sea and the, the Straits of Taiwan and all around the world, freedom of navigation, we can go anywhere we want. We have the freedom of navigation. And now that these larger navies that became larger during this time period, where they uh, must have had their eyes closed or uh, the rabbit and the, the, the turtle sort of race um, where the Chinese actually turned out to be the rabbits. So did the Russians. Scary, eh? So, so, uh, so now that it's on the other, the shoe's on the other foot, now it's not okay? How, do, how does that work? If it's, uh, if it's off your coast, 
it's not okay, but if it's off somebody else's coast, now it's okay again or in the past or in the future. I, 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 uh, I, I, I don't quite get this provocation thing because if they're international waters, it's right in navigation, simple and easy, right? That's the American playbook, right? And a couple of things, because, you know, I research this stuff. Uh, you know, we spend all tubers that uh, don't just blow shit out their ass, uh, like the California clowns that just tell you lies and stuff. Lies sell, I guess, because they're doing okay. But Sweden has uh, the one, two, three, four, fifth biggest navy in the world, Sweden. See, I would never have understood, thought that. Uh, and just under Sweden is Indonesia, then Italy, India, Thailand, and Sri Lanka for size of, of, uh, of, of navies. Cool. First, People's Republic of China, then Russia, North Korea, then the United States. But as I said, with North Korea, if you uh, put a 50 cal on a 16-foot alumarine with a 25-horse Yamaha on the back, well... I would imagine they would consider that a ship. So, uh, and uh, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But this is what this is what comes off the internet. So, when you're sitting back watching your news, and you see that China and Russia are attacking Alaska, and the United States Navy comes to the rescue, and 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 scares those pesky Chinese and Russians away and then tell you how it's provoking war in a very dangerous world, you're going to have to ask yourself, why is it a dangerous world? Who started this? Who made this behavior acceptable to the entire world? You have to understand that the Chinese and the Russians up until a day ago, or two days ago, had never done this in the past. The only people that have been doing this in the past are the Americans, the Canadians, the Australians, the British, yes, Filipinos, you know, uh, they're, they're the Japanese. So all of these v puppet states behind the Americans uh, they're highly influenced by the American military complex. Uh, they're, they're basically told what to do by the Americans. And if, and if they don't, well, then they're shunned. And, and uh, sort of like uh, Canada was with AUKUS, but that's, a, that's for another vid video. But the idea is that uh, now the Americans are getting a taste of their own medicine. Uh, they're, they're starting to understand that they're not the big boy on the block anymore. Uh, China's made many inroads around the world in, in, with economic strength, Belt and Road Initiative. They've got uh, friends in places that you would never have thought they would have friends in. So if the Americans think that uh, they're the only ones that can push that button, freedom of navigation button, around the world and use that as a tactic to try to intimidate other countries around the world. Well, they, uh, they just found out now, just now, that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And uh, it can happen to them too. Anyway, now that's another video from Guilao60. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button. Don't forget to resubscribe. And, uh, ooh, is that wine? Yes. When I'm sitting in my studio, I'm, uh, I, I can drink my homemade wine and tell you exactly, exactly what I, I see, feel, and uh, it's real and uncut just like the beginning of this video said. So until next time, peace out. Bye now.